Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Megan Allen. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we are gonna start a new series. We are gonna start walking through the Psalms. So today we are going to be looking at Psalm 1. So let's get started. So I'm going to begin just by reading through the whole psalm and then we'll go verse by verse and we'll break it down a little bit and see um, what different applicable points that we can pull out and apply to our lives today. So let's start in verse one. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields fruit in its season, and his leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Okay, so... So Psalm 1 is known for um, con the contrast between um, the righteous and the wicked. However, if we look at this first verse here, um, you'll notice another contrast. And that is the contrast between what the blessed man does not do and what he does do. So we see that the man who is blessed does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. So this word here, wicked, means a person who is hostile towards God. So a man who is blessed does not seek counsel or advice, um, nor the ways or the lifestyle of a person who is hostile towards the Lord. But rather, verse 2 says that he will delight in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So this just made me ask myself as I was studying this, have I or have we made God's word our delight? So that is the main question that came to my mind as I was studying the first couple verses here. The word delight means longing or pleasure, thing of value. So let's keep going and look now at verse 3. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. And whatever he does, he prospers. So next we see the result of the one who delights in God's word. This picture of a tree planted by water illustrates what is produced within the spiritual life of a believer. It pictures a continual growth and a bearing of the fruit of the spirit. And this word here, wither, means to wilt, faint, fall away, disgrace. So that, let's contrast that with this word prosper, which means to push forward, break out, and be profitable. So can you imagine a life that never withers and prospers in whatever we do? Yes, please. Okay, so let's keep moving on. Let's look at verses four through six now. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So the contrast here looks at the future of the wicked as opposed to what we just looked at in verse three, um, the future of the righteous, um, never withering, but fruitful and prospering in all that we do, the person who delights in the law of the Lord. So more than focusing on the behavior of the wicked, we see what awaits those who are hostile towards the Lord. So the chaff here was a byproduct of threshing, um, which again is much different than the fruits that we see in the previous verses. The chaff was blown away by the wind being separated from what was useful. It was separated from the seed or the fruits of the plant. So this shows us that, um, Unlike a man who delights in knowing God, that um, the man who is like a tree planted by streams of water, um, the wicked, those who are hostile towards God, are living their lives in a way that is meaningless. So I think here we need to pause um, and I need to take time often to examine my life. That fruit that my life is producing, does that prove 
that I'm abiding and delighting in God's word? Does it prove that I'm prospering in my spiritual life? Or does it prove that I'm withering and not moving forward in my spiritual life and in my relationship with God? So it is only through a thriving relationship with God and a growing knowledge of him and his word that we are able to produce anything of value that will last for eternity. It is the kingdom fruits that we need to be bearing. There are a lot of things that we can be doing and ways that we can be spending our time that the world may consider to be good and right. But will a lot of these things stand in the day of judgment? The only works and the only things that will last for eternity are those things that give value to God's kingdom. Okay, so let's just do a little bit more application here. So as I was studying this, um, again, one of the main questions that I wanted to ask myself is, who or where am I getting my counsel from? Who are the people and what are the things that I'm allowing to persuade my thoughts or to provide me with comfort and peace and joy and entertainment? Um, am I looking intentionally or unintentionally to the world? Am I allowing the world to shape my view of life and shape my view of my relationships with others? And if I am, how is that influence affecting the fruit of my life? So again, all of this, as I consider and ponder all of these things, I'm reminded again, just the importance of needing to be intentional in our relationship with God. There may be days when we wake up, we don't feel like getting in the word, we don't feel like praying. Those are the moments that we have to be disciplined. We have to remain intentional in nurturing our relationship with the Lord and nurturing our knowledge of his word. I believe this word meditate is so much more than just a feeling, right? Sometimes I don't feel like meditating on God's word, um, but it takes, again, it takes intention. It takes discipline. And as we continue to discipline ourselves to meditate in God's word and to delight ourselves in his word, our desire um, for more of his word will increase. Our longing and the pleasure that we find by spending time in God's word will increase. And that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. I'm trying to get new content up each week. Also, if this video was encouraging to you, make sure you let me know. Leave me a comment or hit that like button. Make sure you come and follow the Girls in the Word Facebook group where we study and discuss God's Word together. I'll make sure I leave a link in the description below where you can find us. And thanks so much for watching.